Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, there's no doubt that the challenges that we're facing collectively here in Australia and right throughout the, the globe at the moment uh, due to COVID-19 are far beyond anything that we ever thought was possible. You know, until now, the incomprehensible um, and the, uh, the, the distressing re reality of um, the pandemic has only really ever uh, until now been a, a fictional reality that could be understood um, on the big screen in mo motion pictures or even like in a sci-fi novel, not um, on our nightly news or in our daily newspaper. And, you know, and really during these unprecedented times, we have um, really been told to look out for the elderly, and um, those who are unable to care for themselves due to health concerns or, you know, government regulations. Um, but there is, however, I guess another whole demographic um, that are equally in need of support and consideration, and that is um, of single parents and divorced primary care parents. And today we're here to help support them and to give a voice to the voiceless uh, with our special guest, Rachel Shara. Um, life Change Counselor and Separation Strategist at Divorce Answered. Now, Rachel will be sharing some tips for balancing quarantine life with single or solo parenting. And we're really, really grateful for your time. How are you, Rachel? Really well, thank you. How are you, Rachel? Yeah, it was Rachel talking to Rachel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, social restrictions um, are making it really incredibly hard for all single parents in what is already an unrelenting task of parenting. Um, and these demands um, have been even more intense, I guess, um, without any relief. So in your line of work, uh, in particular in the last few weeks, what's been your experience um, with this? I think that there's been a lot of uncertainty for many single parents. Um, you know, particularly around what can they do, what can't they do. Uh, we've been bombarded by the media and um, it just becomes quite an overwhelming experience. And then on top of that, you're primarily stuck at home with your kids, often juggling, you know, the work-life balance, educating them, and it gets, it, it's quite exhausting. So um, I, I feel that you know, parenting certainly comes under a microscope and parents are getting to know their children a lot better. Equally, you know, they're trying to co-parent or work with the children's other parent. And sometimes that's bringing up a few little challenges for them that they've got to sort of navigate for the first time. Mm. So are you saying that at this point in time that a lot of um, parents and, and um, single parents are starting to find some gaps that maybe that they hadn't identified that they, that they need to put in place? Is that, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. There's a lot of questions around how do I see my children for their birthdays, particularly with this COVID crisis where parents may have otherwise shared time together or had a party. Um, perhaps a parent lives uh, in a different state and they're sharing school holidays or they've got orders that they share school holidays. The children can't leave one state to go to another because of these restrictions. So they're navigating new challenges mm. um, due to the, the social restrictions. Yeah. So I guess in your role as a, as a di divorce and relationship expert and separation strategist, um, you know, what are your personal thoughts on the, um, the additional pressures our single parents mm -hmm. are feeling and experiencing right now, um, in particular with the likes of like homeschooling and um, social isolation? Yeah, I think parents are just, they've got to give them, cut themselves some slack, give, give yourself a break. I don't think that we can do parenting to the best of our ability and work to our, the best of our ability, um, you know, and, and enjoy family life when we're trying to do all of it at the same time in, in close quarters as well. So, yep. um, yeah, I really feel like people just need to sort of go easy on themselves. Not every day is going to be a great day and um, just sort of take it as it comes. Yeah, I guess we really need to be mindful um, mm -hmm. of the pressures um, of social isolation and what they're placing on everyday tasks. Even for, for things like um, food shopping, I saw a post um, from one of our major supermarket chains. I'm not going to mention who they are, but the post was 
pretty strong and it was asking parents, you know, don't come into our stores um, with your whole family and with your kids. Um, you know, this is a time of social isolation and, um, you know, some, some single parents don't have any other option than to go and do food mm. shopping um, and to bring the kids along with them. Um, so I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this? I feel for these families and I do understand. Um, but I guess that's why we've got, we're so lucky to be in an age with online shopping. You know, the major yeah. supermarkets do home deliveries. There are community gardens or community grocers, as well as the major chains that will do food and fruit and veg deliveries to your home, which includes like milk and cheese and eggs. So perhaps it might be for a small extra fee, the delivery cost, but there is a lot that we can do to keep the children out of the supermarkets. On the other side, I do appreciate the supermarkets position, which is mm. we don't want your children unnecessarily infected. So yeah, it's good difficult. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you especially when you live on your own and you've got the children at home. Not every child can be left alone for half an hour to two hours while their parent does a food shop. So yeah. online shopping is quite crucial to this demographic. Yeah, really, really good point. Um, so we published your article titled Balancing Quarantine Life with Single or Solo Parenting. Now, for someone who hasn't read the article, can you please just give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and tell us what inspired you to write it? Um, the article is basically simple tips for parents that, you know, they can follow if they haven't already, um, follow at home to fill their child's day um, and, and sort of keep them a little bit occupied. Um, usually children would be going to school and the parents would have some time to themselves or they would go to work and this whole juggle is difficult. Um, I guess it feels like we fall into holiday routine, but we can't always have holiday routine almost indefinitely. Mm -hmm. So children, when they go to school, have a lot of structure and they have routine. Sadly, being at home all day, they don't have that. So it's really important for parents to be able to create that structure and routine for their children. And that includes staying one step ahead of them, ahead of the child, that is. So mm -hmm. set a task or, or set them up with some work and already have planned either the night before or as they're doing that task, the next item that they can move on to, which gives you a little bit of mental relief. Um, we are so lucky to have lots of free and online resources made available to everybody at the moment, like, you know, watching the zoos around the globe 24 seven and Audible have made a ton of books available for free at the moment. Um, there are online peer classes and coding and there's a lot of things that parents can set their children up with, which then free up the parents to have a little bit of downtime or time out. Yeah. So it's about really exploring all of the options and being creative and, um, and using those options where you can. Um, now your sure. article um, really shares some, some great tips uh, how to help single parents through their day. Would you be um, kind enough just to, to, to maybe share some of those tips um, with us? Um, we're going to have the link in the introduction paragraph anyway so, um, so parents can actually read the article, but just share um, some of the tips that you've actually um, provided us with within the, with, within the body of the article. I think the major tips for the parents um, would be that they that their perspective or their outlook on this whole quarantine social restrictions situation does filter down to the children. Mm -hmm. So if you're an anxious parent, it would be really great for you to get some some help or support or to even just recognize it and and take a breath. Um, because if you're an anxious parent, often you'll end up sharing that sort of those unsettled feelings with your children. Um, so if you can try to keep a positive, fun perspective on homeschooling and, and being at home or mostly at home, um, your children will follow your lead. So I think that's incredibly important for parents. And also for parents to watch their own emotions. So, you know, often we when we get upset or frustrated, we take it out on the people closest to us. It's not ideal to be taking it out on little kids. And, and they certainly do have their moments. They push our buttons and they can drive us up the wall, as beautiful as they are. But um, it's really important that as parents, we know what we can do when we 
notice ourselves getting frustrated or notice ourselves getting upset or angry, you know, put ourselves in a timeout or recognize it and tell the children, you know, mum's getting upset here, please stop. Um, you know, to be able to communicate with our kids so that we can, we, we as parents can keep more of an even keel for their benefit. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned something before, which I'd love to be able to maybe expand on just a little bit, which is about the fact that this time is really putting us um, collectively, not just in parenting, but as, as adults as well, under the microscope um, and really sort of highlighting, um, you know, all of the good stuff and the bad stuff. Um, and, you know, like personally, what, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I guess it shows everybody, you know, where our strengths lie and where we're not so strong. And um, I guess with all parts of our lives, we need to try to play to our strengths and work on our weaknesses. And, you know, if that's your perspective or your emotional regulation or your high standards, maybe they're things to just be more conscious and aware of and, and ease up on. Mm hmm um getting getting back to specifically um uh, single parents at the moment you know i'd love to know do you have um any advice for parents who um, are sharing custody of their children however i guess are concerned about the social isolation rules and regulations um in particular with the cross contamination with germs and depending on um you know the, the other parent what their particular role is i've got a friend of mine and and um her um uh her, her ex-partner, ex-husband actually works in a hospital. Um, and of course, mm -hmm. they've, they've stopped all of, um, you know, the, the visitations for the moment. So, I mean, what, what's, what's sort of your, your thoughts about, about this sure. at this time? I really feel like this is um, family situation dependent. So, you know, like not everybody's got the same concerns or issues as the next family. So we can't do a you know, um, one rule for everybody um, application here. I, for single parents, co-parenting, I really feel like you need to have open lines of communication with each other at, at this point in time, especially if one parent has a sniffle, has a sore throat, or the child's not well, you know, come to an agreement. It's not about just having your time with the child if it's to the detriment of the child's well-being. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like well, most certainly you have to abide by your court orders where practicable. Um, if, you, if you can't send your child to a different state, then obviously you can't abide by those orders. But if it's just a visitation and an overnight and the other parent doesn't have flatmates and is working from home, if you were to try to withhold your child from that parent, you would have to have a very good reason. And mm. the courts, I know, are not going to use coronavirus as just any excuse. Yeah. You, you've got to have a really firm, plausible reason. And if you mm. do have concerns, you know, check in with somebody, check in with your lawyer, just ask a quick question. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Um, I think it's also really important to encourage the relationship between the child and, and both parents. So let's say in your friend's situation where, you know, they're not sharing the child between two homes at the moment, it would be about how do we facilitate a relationship between the child and in that situation, the, the doctor parent. Mm -hmm. Well, FaceTime is great, you know, um, Yes. Depending on the age of the child, they can do schoolwork together. They can read books together. They can maybe, if they can angle the camera correctly, you know, do a puzzle together. You know, the parent that is in their own home can sort of try to direct the child or play some games. Um, but, yeah, above all else, you know, facilitate the relationship as best as you can within the constraints that you've got. Yep. And using technology for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, yeah, and meeting obligations, I guess, may be um, a little more challenging during this time for, for separated parents in, in general. But if, um, you know, if a court order or agreement is in place, um, however, one parent is finding it hard to meet the terms in that agreement, um, yeah. what, what, um, what advice do you have to help the two parties uh, find a solution at this time? First of all, I would talk to each other and if you can't talk maybe email back and forth um, and try to find a, 
a solution that works for both households. Mm -hmm. Failing that, um, you know, maybe there could be makeup time down the track when all of this um, coronavirus situation is ended. Mm -hmm. The child could have more weekends, more regular weekends, let's say, with the other parent, just to make up for the time that they've lost. Um, for families that have parenting orders in place that have got holes, like this is a time where the holes would become glaringly obvious mm. um, in their plans, now's the time to review that and update the orders. Just plugging those holes. You don't have to write a whole new plan necessarily, um, but you can update the orders by consent so that it works for both parents. Good for point. the parents that have got parenting plans in place, maybe you want to be able to hold your um, child's other parent to that plan and lodge it at court and have it made an order. Mm. So there's lots of options. Um, and, and you know what? Parenting plans and orders are made to be updated. They're not, they don't have to be, you know, created when a child's three or five and hold them till they're 18, you know? So as circumstances change, definitely update your parenting plan. It's like a, um, uh, the only thing that just jumped into my mind just then was just like when you put together um, a business strategy or those or a business mm. plan and that these types of things aren't meant to be sort of put together and put in a drawer and it's forgotten about, you know. So if you are going to yeah. live by the sword, you die by the sword. And, and then from that perspective, keep it live, keep it um, constantly yeah. updated. Is, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And if you can't agree, mediators are doing like Zoom chats, you know, they're doing Zoom mediation. So... Um, or, or you might have a family friend that you could put on the phone that, that you know, you're happy to help mediate the, this conversation about mm. you know, the parenting issues that you've got. Yeah. And, you know, overall social um, isolation may prove a little bit more difficult um, for parents to co-parent, um, meaning that the primary caregiver um, has the, the children the majority of the time. So this is no doubt going to mm. lead to exhaustion. Um, and I guess coupled with this, um, a lot of single parents may have had um, and been raising their children as part of a, um, a wider community with support from family and friends. Um, so, you know, in your opinion, I'd love to know what options do you think single parents um, should be exploring at this time, but may, that they maybe hadn't thought about previously? Sure. One of the things that many single parents or people that become single or end their marriage um, don't realise is that they should be updating their will. Because um, in their absence, let's say they do get ill, become ill, the, the assets will go to their other parent or the person that were, they were previously married to. So this is a time to sort of look at your life as a whole. Um, who would you appoint as guardian to your children if it's not the other parent, depending on your situation? And even if the children do go to, you know, live with the other parent, who will you have there advocating for you? Mm. Equally, you could look at your current um, your current situation. What if you did get ill and you wanted to the children just to stay elsewhere? The solution would be obviously a great co-parenting relationship, and the children would then go and spend time with their other parent. But is there a family member that might be able to step up and help you out through a, tr a tricky time? Mm, good point. Mm. Um, and what about single parents who are expected to work from home at the moment and homeschool? No doubt this is an extremely difficult task at the moment. Do you like have any words of advice um, how they can best juggle uh, the needs of children and, and work? Yeah, that, that's, a t that's a tough one. Mm. Uh, I, for me, my kids are a little bit older and they're doing independent learning. So I can set them up for the day and then sit down and do my own work. Um, I don't have to be in the same room as them. So that's really easy. Um, I do appreciate that the younger the child, you know, that's started school, the more hands-on the parents will need to be. So I guess it would be about creating chunks of time where you have one-on-one -on -one with your child teaching them and then set them up with some colouring in or, you know, one of those online apps for maths or English that they can play, like learning play, while you get a little bit of work done. It's not easy and employers do understand that this is such an unprecedented juggle um, that they've got to be flexible. Yeah. 
The other thing I love as a single parent is putting my kids to bed early. So you can always make up time in the evening or you can sort of enjoy some more downtime, child-free time once they're in bed. Mm. And just thinking about it and going back to what you were saying before um, about the whole, you know, putting life under a, a microscope um, mm. and also combining some of the, the research I was doing for the chat today and just reading different articles. Um, it seems like... Um, some parents um, have documented in, in other um, sort of articles that, that, that they don't have a backup plan in place. Um, mm -hmm. And um, as mentioned, as, as you're going back before, early on in the, uh, the interview, that, you know, this, this sort of gives now an, an opportunity to be able to put together a, pan, a plan in place, but um, mm -hmm. taking into consideration that they are now um, facing um, a whole heap of different issues, I guess, with limited access to childcare, um, you know, the, the I guess the the fear of like job loss um, and all of the issues with um, isolation, um, even um, deciding who would bring up their children in the event um, of any illness. It doesn't have to be COVID nineteen, but any yeah. illness. If something was to happen to them, who would be looking after the uh, to the children at this time? I guess all these big and heavy issues are becoming quite real. Um, yeah. So, what what are your your thoughts um, on this? And and in particular for parents, you know, do, do you think that they should be um, considering putting together a backup plan or just reviewing the plans that they have? In the absence of a plan, you need to create a plan. And if you've got a plan, it's worth reviewing it. And I think that you need to consider who is in that plan, who would be able to stop what they're doing and help you in a time of need. Mm -hmm. um, is that the child's other parent? Is it your parents? Is it um, a family friend, a neighbour? I think it's really about assessing who it might be and then having the conversation with those people um, about, you know, how to action in the, in the event of need. Mm -hmm. And um, for parents who maybe don't have a plan or anything like that, do you have any advice where they could start? Ooh. Do you, do you have like any online resources as an example that you could maybe suggest? I, no, I don't have online resources for a backup plan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I certainly think it comes around down to your, who, who is in your inner circle. Mm -hmm. And I would chat with those people in your inner circle because they're more than likely your like-minded people and that you're probably going to have similar backup plans, albeit slightly different depending on your um, unique circumstances. But yeah, they, they are the people that know you best. I mean, you can always talk to your lawyer, your accountant, um, you know, your ex, your, your child's other parent as well. But I think the people in your inner circle know you best. Mm, you've given us some really great um, points and, and food for thought today, um, Rach. Um, if you were to summarise, I guess, all the key points, um, I guess, how, how would you sort of summarise that for anyone watching and listening? <laughs> I, uh, so solo parenting, I would say to them, you know, open the lines of communication and work as a team with your, your child's other parent. Um, I would recommend that you take and, and pay attention to your self-care, like self-care as in your mental health, your general well-being, um, your sanity, because that's incredibly like essential right now, um, just to make it through however many months this will be. And if you've got parenting plans, make them into an order. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, on, on Divorce Answered, we've got a parenting plan that you can buy, make unlimited changes. It's click the clause, add your own clause, and it will come out. It'll populate itself, take you a lot of the stress out of it. Mm -hmm. And then you can have it checked by a lawyer and lodge it at court. Um, and that's often the easiest way to go ahead and, and have some plan made into an order. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll include all of those links in the um, as part of the introduction paragraph. Thank you so much for your time today, Rach. And uh, we can't wait to speak with you again soon. Take care. My love to the Thanks, kids. Thanks, Rachel. Bye. Bye.